Right. Originally, when we were working through this, I'll go to this slide right here, that first section. We went through phonological and phonemic awareness, which is extremely important. I want to highlight all these sections in terms of reading development, just to get a sense of exactly where we are. We did phonological and phonemic awareness. We talked about all those sounds, how those sounds help with letter sound correspondence. We talked about things like concepts of print and those symbols, those symbols and being aware of those symbols carrying meaning beyond just pictures. Yesterday, we added in fluency. And we also included word identification. Real quick, that word identification was part of our essays. It was, it was our first essay. I'll do the, uh, the word ID essay. And what were the four terms that I asked you to review last night? What were the four terms? Real quick, type them in. Well, there's, there's four terms that are extremely important. Sight words, context clues, we got sight words and context clues. What else? Sight words, going to get a good phonics, thank you, and word analysis. And these ones here are very, very important. So I'm just going to write that down. We got our sight words, we got our phonics, we got our, our context clues, and we got our structural word analysis. And out of this set right here, out of this set right here, which one of these would you use for uh, phonetically regular single syllable words? Like words like Sheep. Which one would you use? Sheep goes with which ones? Yes, that's right. We'll write down sheep is phonics. Let's write that down. And I'm just going to really quickly write down sheep, cow, um, fish, okay, uh, bowl. Just, just let's look at these here. What is this again? The SH is a what? Real quick. Within phonics, it's a what? Two things, one sound is a, two things, one sound? Diagraph, a constant diagraph. What about this one right here, the double E? What's that? Two vowels, one sound. Vowel diagraph. Okay, vowel diagraph. Okay, how about this one right here? The ow and cow and o and bowl. What are those? Diphthongs, diphthongs. Okay, so, so phonics, everyday words contain these, these patterns within spelling and in pronunciation. Very, very important to become aware of. Vowel diagraphs, constant diagraphs, diphthongs. Thumbs up, team. This is very important. This may be something that you have to review again, take a second look at. Uh, what about the words, like, what about these words here? Let's do another set of words. Let's say we saw a student was having difficulty with words like uh, function words. Words like the, of, some, near. What, what, what are these words? Oh, these are sight words. Let's highlight these. So these are partially or fully phonetically irregular words that we want a student to memorize so they have, they have automaticity with these high frequency words. A student that has gaps in these words, I'll write down a couple other, others, where, uh, were, what, right? A student that's missing these words, well, this is something that means, this is something that can be explicitly taught but it's something that we want to address because these are high frequency words that you can't use phonics for. Okay, so we got sight words, we got phonics. How about this one right here? Let's do this one, uh, pet goldfish, goldfish. And I know the one that we did yesterday, the students said go goalish, right? And they said goalish, and what did they say? In their head, they were like what? They said, what did they say? They say goalish, pet goalish, and they're like, what? That doesn't make sense. And then they go to look for some sort of clue or hint. Pet is a semantic context clue. It's a semantic hint. It helps us identify that goalish is wrong, but goldfish makes sense. Ooh, I dropped this. Let me do another one, syntactical. Let me do syntactical clue. Everyone write down here. So semantic is when the clue helps you make sense of a, a word. But let's do a syntactical. I would say syntactical. Syntactical. <laughs> Has to do with grammar. What if I wrote down this? Uh, everyone write down two boys. Two boys. But when, a, when I read it or a student reads it, they say two boy. Now they say two boy and what goes off in their head when they say two boy? They, they omit the S, and they say to boy, and, and what happens? They say what? Hmm. 
that doesn't sound right. And then they go look for some sort of grammatical clue. Oh, it's two. So the boys, boy has to be plural. So semantic clues are things that help you select a word that makes sense. Syntactical context clues are clues that help you self-correct a grammatical mistake. Does that make sense? Sort of. Okay. So one doesn't sound, so when they read something and it doesn't make sense, they look for a semant, uh, they look for which type of context clue. When it doesn't make sense, they look for which type of context clue? Semantic. So let's write that down. When it doesn't make sense, goalish, what's a goalish? They look for a semantic context clue. When it doesn't quite sound right, Thank you, that was a great observation. When it doesn't quite sound right, two boy. Uh, oh, uh, then, then it does, then they look for a syntactical. Great, I'm glad that we got that. Okay, so within context clues, we have semantic and syntactical context clues. Team, remember that, okay? Okay, and the last one was uh, structural word analysis. So let's see if I can find some room here. We have words like, let's just write this down, replay, uh, um, let's do uh, near, nearly, let's do uh, sw swiftest. Okay, now replay, what's the base word in replay? What's the base word? Play, okay, so we would be looking for a student to chunk up a multi-syllable word, possibly into its base, its stem and its prefix, or its its base and its suffix. So nearly, they could break it into that. Or what about swiftest? So it would be swiftest. Okay, um, what if we saw a student, let me see if I can clear some room here. What if we saw a student and they had words like this? They had words like uh, swiftest, uh, uh, fastest, and they were, what if, what if we noticed that they were omitting the endings? What could we say? They're, they're omitting it and they're not fixing it. There's no self-correction. If we saw a student omitting a part of a word, like the endings, the suffix of a word, what would be the weakest? What would, what would be the, what would be the observation? Where, where would their weakness be? They're omitting the end of a word, the suffix, the inflection, the end of a word. Their problem, it's a multi-syllable word, right? They're not chunking the multi-syllable word into decodable part. So if they're omitting the end of a word, then it's structural word analysis. Remember that. So I'll say it again. If we see a student with a word like swiftest or fastest and they're omitting the ending, it means that they're not chunking, they don't have a strategy for multi-syllable words and they're not chunking the end, they're not breaking it into parts or breaking it into its base and its suffix. So this would be a weakness in structural word analysis. This is a weakness in structural word analysis and, and a student that misses words like back, pack, right? This is also a weakness in structural word analysis. When they say, when they try to do this one with back up, right? So this one right here, this is a weakness in structural word analysis involving what type of word? It's a multi-syllable word, but what's the name of this one? This is a multi-syllable word, compound word. So when we looked at Daniel, the student was having difficulty with uh, structural word analysis, mainly with compound words. Words like omit, words where the student omits the ending is also multi-syllable. And it's another example of a weakness in structural word analysis. Can you remember that, team? That's, that, that's, sometimes these things don't necessarily look the same, but they're the same weakness. So a student having difficulty with a word like backpack, having difficulty with that word, or having difficulty in omitting words like fastest, you know, this would be, this, this, this would show weakness in multi-syllable words and they're them not breaking it apart or using structural word analysis to decode it. So you could use structural word analysis for both these. Here's what I wanna do. 
Um, and I want to get your feedback on this first, all right? It would be great before I jump into anything new if I could add a little bit. But in order to add this, um, what it's going to do is I'm going to need to use the question and answer session that we have scheduled for the last session for, uh, I'm going to need that time to do the assessment section. So is it okay if we do another case study like Daniel? If we, if we could just fit that in and then use the question and answer session, which not everyone's always there for, usually it's only like five or five or six teachers, but if we could use that and do a group thing right now, that would be great. Is that cool? Okay, 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 then I'll only do this for five minutes, okay? Some teachers are testing on Wednesday, they gotta get it done. So I'll just do this for five minutes. Is that fair, five minutes? Fair, all right, everyone, jump to the end, jump to the end, to this one right here. And the name of this at the end of your packet, the name is Jonathan. We're talking about structural word analysis and and of those four ideas, and that Jonathan is a case study, uh, is a in, a, is a case study for the, the word identification. And again, Jonathan, let's highlight this, is a third grader, highlight that. And he's reading aloud a passage from an unfamiliar story. And this is a, a second example, a second case study for the word identification essay. Give me a thumbs up. So we did Jonathan, we did Daniel yesterday, this is Jonathan. I know we don't have a lot of time, but I want you to skim it over. Just skim it over. Read it to yourself. Read it to yourself correctly. So that means I want you to read it as if you were Jonathan, but I want you to read it correctly. So just read the story to yourself. All summer, Karen had wished for a new bike. Just read it to yourself. Don't worry about the miscues. Just read, get the story down. She was tired of riding her old sister's worn out bike. You know, read it to yourself. Give you uh, another minute. Give me a thumbs up when you when you read it. I'm gonna ask you a comprehension question real quick. What's the girl's name again? What's the girl's name? And she was riding a what? What was she riding? And she she, she wanted to buy a new bike. I got that. And who does she see riding down the street? Rob Jones. Okay. Always read the story first to yourself real quick. Because if you read the story how it's meant to be read, all summer Karen wished for a new bike. She was tired of riding her old sister's worn out bike. What she really wanted was a sleek, shiny mountain bike that would perform well on the dirt roads and pass in your house. You read it to yourself. Then you go back. And, and now things are going to start to pop. I want you to take your highlighter and highlight every word where there's a pause. There's a pause here, there's something here, there's some stuff going on here and here, right? Now, if we really, really look close at these, there's something going on with each one of these. And I'm gonna just do this and then I'm gonna do something that's much faster, but just I wanna look very closely because every time there's a pause, there's something. Now, this word right here where there's a pause, uh, it's a pause with what are some of the ideas in phonics? In the word wished, what are some ideas with wished? There's, what's one idea that's there in wished? Yeah, let's write down there's a diagraph, right? The SH. And there's also what else? There's the ED ending, yes? How about tired, tired, tired? What are some phonics things in the word tired? There's, oh, there, there is an ED, another ED, and there's also what? There's a magic key. So I'll just write down the magic key, right? It makes that, that's a long I. Okay, and what about writing, writing, writing? Oh, writing's got another magic, uh, a magic key. It's got another long I, but then it's got an I-N-G. Okay, so, so when we look at this stuff a little closer, all of a sudden we start to see that phonics you know, coming out. Who starts to see it if we look a little closer? 
you start to look really closer, we start to see things. And it's not a big thing, but I'm just going to do this real quick, okay? We said that this word has a, a, a constant diagraph here. Well, well, so does this one here. And uh, guess what? Uh, this, this one here where there's a pause, there's also a constant diagraph. Okay, all of a sudden now we got one, two, three constant diagraphs. We're doing this very quickly, but there may be a case there for some weaknesses in phonics. Now I'm going to pull back. You don't need to look that close. You don't need to look that close. What we'll do is we'll just look at really obvious things where there's a miscue. So now go back and circle where there is a clear cut miscue. Just circle these words, all these ones here. Let's just stick with the ones where there's a clear cut. All right. And keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Do you see a pattern with any of these? Are there any, any of these have a, is there any patterns? Like I just circled, okay, where, who said sight words? Okay, what are some of the, what are some of the sight words for? List, list some of the sight words you see. Just type them in real quick. Yeah, let's highlight that. We got we got what here. I'll just do what. We'll do sight words. Would. I missed that one. We got uh, where. We got every, nearly, uh, enough, could. Who sees those? How many sight words is that? That's a lot, right? Okay, so I'm going to put down here frowny town. Okay, uh, sight words. And I'm just going to put down a few. Let's just write it down together. There's what, missed what, and could. And, uh, and uh, uh, could, uh, would. Okay, and uh, near, nearly. And where? Look at those. Who sees it now? Who sees it very clearly? We don't have to go. You can look deeper into these. And if you look deeper, you will find things if you look deeper. But you don't have to. If this is new for you, then you stick at this level right here. I think the sight words are the, the easier of the two mistakes to talk about. Phonics would be something that you'd have to take a much closer read at. If you're a reading specialist, you might want to look to see why they're pausing on words like tired and writing and see if there's a pattern. But but otherwise, you know, if you're just starting out, I think you go with sight words as the weakness. Give me a thumbs up. Who's, who agrees? Okay, so sight words is a clear-cut weakness. Now let's think about these other words that we've circled here. Uh, did they get words like summer right and mountain right? Summer, mountain, did they get those right? Well, the student pauses and they say all summer. Does, does that help them pronounce it right? Aren't they sounding it out? I think you could make a case for them. They're chunking it up and, 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 and pronouncing it together. So it's not a compound word. These two, summer, they're chunking it into syllables. So I'm going to write down here a structural word analysis. But words like uh, with summer and uh, mount, mountain, and I gotta I gotta reduce this marker down. They are not chunking it into base words, or they're chunking it into syllables. That's a type of structural word analysis. Structural word analysis is the ability to chunk a word into decodable parts. Here they're chunking it into two syllables and blending it together. Um, give me a thumbs up. Yes. So we got them chunking it into syllables for words like summer and mountain. And what else? What other word could we fall in here? Summer, mountain, allowance, right? Allowance. That would fall there. And then another category. Yeah, I like it. Newspaper. Newspaper and uh, what's the other one? Newspaper and shoebox, right? Is there a shoebox? That could be what? That could be structural word analysis with what type of words? Compound words. So remember, we don't we don't want to just sound like a broke. We don't want to just say one thing. 
We want to be like, hey, Jonathan uses structure word analysis to identify uh, multi-syllable words. Here, Jonathan, we define what structure word analysis is. And then we were like, okay, here's an example of how Jonathan uses structure word analysis and breaks the multi-syllable words into syllables. Like, for example, in summer and mountain to properly identify and pronounce the word. New sentence. Another example of Jonathan's use of structure word analysis with multi-syllable words is with compound words like newspaper and shoebox. Someday, yes, that would work too. Someday. So that would be nice if you if you got those two distinctions, two different types of uses of structure word analysis. Give me a thumbs up. Jonathan is different than Daniel. Daniel, what was what was Daniel's uh, strength? Daniel was using what? Daniel was using what? Daniel was using context clues, right? And and Daniel struggled, had difficulty with structural word analysis. But now Jonathan, wait, Jonathan's doing something else. Jonathan's doing structural word analysis as a strength, and he's having difficulty with sight words. So this is why it's super important for you to study all these terms. You got to be able to see uh, what the real strength is and what the real weakness is. Okay, that's that's something that that's why you want to really understand those four terms. Okay, I want you to uh, if you if you we don't have time to do this in this session, but uh, um, there is a if you turn the page, there is this sample four. So this is Jonathan. It's not a sample four. It's a three or four. It's not a perfect one. It's around 300 words. And it could give you a sample of what a three or four might look like for Jonathan. Okay? Hi, team. This is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. If you like this video, press the like button below or subscribe to our channel. This allows us to do more videos for teachers on their teacher certification exams. And if you need additional help, you can come and check out a Go Academy workshop or webinar or tutoring. You go to www.goacademy.com. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.